Hello everyone. This is the demo video of the data mining component by group 15. The team members are Iti Bansal, Neil Kirit, Mansi Somani, Nabiha Raza and Priyanka Punjabi. I Mansi would like to focus today on the goals of this data mining component. The main objective of data mining in big data is to process, structure and derive values from massive blocks of data. For our data mining component, we have selected the IMDB database. It is a free user-maintained data set for over 4 lakh movies, television series and video games. It contains information such as title of the movies, the genre, cast and user ratings. We have used the classification data mining technique today and have performed the analysis over here based on naive ways and decision tree classifiers to predict the success of movies on the basis of average user ratings. The steps in data mining in the, in this, uh, for this data set are as follows. Pre-processing, feature extraction, feature selection, classification, prediction and accuracy comparison followed by the final result. Hi, uh, I'm Iti and I'll be discussing about the data visualization part using ggplot in R. Um, so uh, before we go on doing the actual data mining, we have to explore uh, the different type of features which we selected during the feature extraction process. And some of them which we want to dig into are the categories, uh, that is the profession, genre, runtime minutes, uh, average rating, and the number of votes. So um, I want to explore what are the different type of professions which are popular among uh, the people in uh, doing uh, working for the movies. To represent this, I have used a bar chart. Uh, in the y-axis, it, it gives me the count, uh, that is the number of movies uh, for which uh, a profession um, for a particular person uh, was there and uh, so we can clearly see that actor and actress are the most popular type of prof professions and uh, production designer and composer is not so much popular among people. Next I want to explore what are the different regions uh, in which the movies were released and uh, in which regions most number of movies were released. So. Uh, as we can see here that uh, US was the region in which most movies were released. Uh, now I, I wanted to know that uh, how many movies were released between the years 1890 uh, and 1920. So I have limited the access to 1890 and 1920. Uh, we can see that most number of movies were released between 1910 and 1920. Uh, now I'll be moving towards a, a bit more complex type of chart which is the stack bar chart. Uh, I want to explore the average rating of the movies by the genre. So genre is uh, the attribute which will be used for stacking the bar charts. Uh, and I've used the R color brewer package to create the color palettes here. Uh, from this uh, visualization, we can uh, see that the average rating of most of the movies was between 5 to 7.5 and the family drama uh, and comedy were the most popular type of genres. Uh, now I want to explore the correlation between the average rating and the number of votes. Uh, the exploration is done with the help of scatter plot and genre is again used uh, to distinguish um, between if there is any cluster. Uh, 
um, but we don't see any such clusters coming out um, through this graph. Uh, now I'll be taking help of the box plot to understand more about the genre ratings um, and the genres and the runtime minutes. Uh, here I have plotted uh, the runtime minutes against the type of genres and uh, I have used uh, the ratings uh, to actually decide uh, the mean and uh, the spread of uh, the box plots. So uh, again we can see that family and uh, comedy are the types uh, which, are, uh, which are spread widely. Uh, among these all other genres. With this we come to an end of the data visualization part. Uh, next we will be moving towards the data, data mining part. Hello. <clears throat> so I'm Nabiha Raza and I'll be walking through the feature selection part. The feature selection is the most important uh, part when it comes to data mining and it's the first step. Um, basically what it is is like it's it's the process where you automatically select those features which contribute most to your prediction variable or output um, in which you're interested in. Uh, and there are a couple of process parts in feature selection. The first being data mugging or data wrangling. It's also called data merging. That comes binning, label encoding, and then finally we come up with a matrix, ma uh, correlation matrix, followed by on which we actually select our features that that we'll use in our model. The first part is data mugging, and <clears throat> this is basically um, data merging. We, we pick up two columns from um, from different tables and then just merge them together for whatever we think um, are best, and will contribute the best in our data modeling. Um, because that, that's that, that, why, why we do that is because um, in some cases we have to deal with messy data or incomplete data and uh, you know the, the raw data is not usable. So data mugging is a process where this data is transformed and mapped from one raw data, raw data to another which makes it more valuable. Uh, the next part is binning. Uh, binning is basically the process of splitting univariate data into consecutive bins. And why is it required? Because we need continuous data. Um, this data that we're seeing right now is not continuous. Um, uh, we've, we've in, in our code, uh, we've divided the bins into um, for runtime minutes, for example, into 0 to 15, 15 to 30 is another bin, and 30 to 60 is another bin. So we've divided the data into multiple bins so that uh, later we get a <coughs> continuous uh, numerical value for this. And um, in this whole process, while we were doing uh, this step of feature selection, we were doing data cleaning uh, side by side. So even in this part, data cleaning also took place. And um, I'll, I'll walk you through the code as well. And you can see it from there as well. Um, but the null values were removed with the, with the, um, with the mean values. Uh, some, some, some attributes were removed and stuff like that. So it's basically data cleaning is happening in every part. Uh, then comes label encoding. It's the last part. Um, before we actually get the coloration matrix um, and uh, what label encoding does is basically it converts all the uh, the, the textual format the, the the text that we had for example for the category in which they were drama comedy uh, all the strings we convert it into um, numerical values and for that we use this particular code snippet and um, so finally when we run this code we see that the entire data frame turns in, into um, all the numerical values and so that we can do our um, you know correlation because it has to be done with variables and variables numerical values have to be compared to each other um, next up we've got correlation matrix correlation matrix is the one that we wanted in the first place for the attributes to be selected um, and there you go we've, we've gotten our matrix um, and then from here we can see that um, the blue part uh, is is the one that in which the attributes are proportional to each other and the negative one was where it was inversely proportional to each other um, 
from that uh, from here we can see that um, we have a relation of, of uh, start here with um, my average ratings and I have a um, genres is related to my average ratings and so is my runtime minutes related to my average ratings and these is these are the attributes that we've chosen for our model to be used in our naive ways and decision tree so now I'll walk you through the code let's go there let's start with the um, feature selection part like I said every on every stage the data cleaning will happen so even here the um, the start here that was actually in the string format is being converted into a numeric value same is happening for end year runtime minutes average rating and num votes now we'll install the library caret to do the encoding and binning at the same time uh, here we're making a different uh, new copy of uh, uh, genre ratings as genre ratings encoded um, and so let's go uh, when it's built let's see our data frame and data mugging has happened right so we should see a lot of uh, data uh, merging of columns here and we can see that some columns are also not available but uh, the data is being merged successfully so let's go ahead and check and uh, install our new library and uh, there again the data cleaning is happening and we're just uh, the values that we saw were uh, null we're just kind of uh, deleting those so any year was empty job was empty primary year had null values birth year death year uh, so all of them are removed now so let's go on the part of encoding and binning at the same time so uh, now encoding of nconce is happening the nconce is encoded genres is encoded now we'll do the binning um, and uh, binning of a runtime minutes is important because um, runtime it started from one and ended at two thousand and it was a continuous value. So we couldn't just make uh, make it, uh, you know, we couldn't encode it. That's why binning was required. So let's bin it before encoding it, and now it's encoded. Uh, the same binning will happen for start here because they were like continuous value and it was too big so we have put it in bins from 1870 to 1990 1990 to uh, 1930 and these are the bins that we've created we'll just run them and then encode the start here as well same encoding for happening for ordering characters category category variety const genre and runtime minutes everything is just getting encoded by one single function uh, now again, we're removing um, the values that were null mm, and you know, data cleaning is happening again. So we're just removing them. And we'll just see that um, if it's run or not. So let's just get back and see if our genre ratings is, is encoded correctly or not. Ah, it is. So like, we, like you can see all that uh, the data is all um, in numerical text the runtime minutes th those were so big were ranging from um, ranging from 1970 to uh, sorry ranging from 0 to 2000 are all um, binned and the data is clean and nice so that's that okay so now um, after uh, the label encoding the time is now to make the correlation matrix so for that we'll install uh, the core plot and um, uh, library we've already installed it and then we'll download the um, our color brown library and now we're just plotting it here and here we did here the matrix is made and now we're printing it and from here we can see that um, the um, the average rating has a high uh, relation with runtime minutes as um, we said in the presentation and the end const is um, uh, has a good relation with average ratings um, and likewise so this is made Hi, this is Priyanka Punjabi and I will be discussing regarding the data mining component. The main focus of a component is to predict the success or failure of a movie, TV series or episode based on certain features such as genre, runtime, minutes, etc. To do so, we had to identify an attribute based on which this prediction could be done. Average rating was one such attribute. 
Next, we have to identify attributes based on which the ratings of a show is determined. This means that there can be certain actors, directors, genre which could affect the success or failure of a movie. To do so, we performed feature selection as discussed before, which gave us a correlation matrix. This matrix helped us identify that runtime minutes, start year, genre were certain attributes that had correlation with the average rating. The two main techniques used for the classification process is naive base and decision tree classifier. Let's start with naive base. <clears throat> Our first classification technique is the naive base classifier. To perform naive base classification, we first split the entire data set into training and testing data. We pass this training data in the naive base function, which computes the conditional posterior probability of a categorical class variable given independent predictor variable, in our case, average rating, using base rule. Once the model is trained, we use this model as a basis to predict the outcome of the test data. This predicted outcome is then tested with the actual outcome to verify the accuracy of the model. We use the inbuilt function in R to perform naive base classification. It included two components, an a priori, which was a class distribution of dependent variables, and tables, which was a list of tables, one for each predictor variable. The result is a confusion matrix depicting the number of correct and incorrect prediction outcomes against the actual outcomes. Based on the number of correct predictions, the accuracy of a model is calculated. As we can see, a model gives an accuracy of 93.72%, which means it gives a correct prediction of an approximate 93% of the times. Since all attributes are independent, it is much faster to compute a naive base classifier. Now let's look at a demo. As you can see, we, the, the naive base classifier is a part of uh, the library E1071. So uh, we run, we just include that library. Um, this is a printing process wherein we bin uh, the average rating into classes so that it is easy for us to perform classification. We sample our test our entire data set as a training and test data. Once it's done, we run the naive base function which is there on the training data. Once the model has been trained, we use that model against the test data to perform a prediction. Once, we, once the prediction is done, we create a confusion matrix. As you can see, here is a confusion matrix. Um, Now, let's plot this. That's my base classifier. Hi, my name is Neil. I'll be talking about decision tree. Decision tree is the second classifier that we have used. And for decision tree, we have included the packages rpart, rpart.plot and caret. The first step over here was the average rating we, uh, which we had in our data set was continuous data. So we have binned it into 10 integer values from 1 to 10. Second thing that we did was we have split our data set which is of 10, 100,000 rows into 80-20 into 80, ratio which is 80% for training data and 20% for, uh, for testing data. The third thing that we did was we ran the model for, uh, we ran the training algorithm on the training uh, on the training data and finally we did the prediction part this was the decision tree that was formed when we ran it previously and the after the prediction was done we did some accurate we checked the accuracy by building the confusion matrix the accuracy which we got was 54.58 percent now i'll walk through the code and i'll build it once again i'm including the libraries this is the binning part so since the if I go and see the data frame average rating has continuous data so 
I have binned it into integer values of 1 to 10. Binning is done. Then this is their training data, which I am taking from 1 to 80,000. Then I am taking a sample, taking test data from the sample, which is 80,000 to 100,000. Now I'll do the training part. So you can see that the attributes that I have considered are runtime minutes, number of votes, start year, and category. These are the attributes that we selected during the feature selection process. And finally, the decision tree. So as you see here, it starts from number of votes and then uh, start year, and then again run number of votes, then runtime minutes. Uh, that's how it's building the decision tree of on our data. I'll, uh, this is the, this shows the summary of our uh, decision tree and then um, now I have done the prediction part on the test data if I print it uh, this is the prediction part which uh, is like the prediction this is the bend rating which it shows it shows like that so if you see here bend rating is uh, it, it says like do not include include six but include seven so this is the bend part a bend rating of average rating and now i'll build the confusion matrix so here i'm getting an accuracy of 57 percent which is slightly better than what we got it from the previous run and uh, we get a specific uh, sensitivity specificity specificity and then positive prediction and negative prediction value so we get a we see that we get some good values over here the, these classes and then somewhere we get not a number also but yeah so this was uh, the confusion matrix for decision tree